Hello, everybody. Thank you very much for joining in. Uh, looks like everything has worked out right now, so we're going to get started. Um, I just did want to take a moment to thank everybody for joining us for our webinar today, uh, where we're going to be covering our eGalaxy group sales module. Um, for those of you who have not met me or who I haven't met you, my name is Chris Izzo. I'm one of the business solutions managers here at Gateway, and today we're going to go through our eGalaxy group sales module. Uh, we'll talk about some of the features and benefits that are available, and then at the end, we'll take a bit of time to actually show the module in action with a little bit of live demo. So we're going to be jumping back and forth between a little bit of presentation and then a little bit of live demo. Um, you know, uh, before we get started, though, I did want to take care of a little bit of housekeeping. So I did mention we'll have a little presentation, really short, nothing too long, just to kind of highlight some of the features and benefits. Uh, we'll then switch over to live demo, but I did want to point out that if you have questions, uh, you can use the Q&A feature or the chat feature that are available. Uh, depending on the view that you're using for our WebEx meeting, those options could be available on the right-hand side of the screen towards the bottom. There's also, at the very bottom of the screen in the center, there are some icons on there that you can use to activate the chat window or the Q&A window. Uh, to type your questions in and ask them. We're going to take a little bit of time at the end of the webinar today to review those questions and make sure that we get you any, of the, any answers that you might you know, have questions for uh, prior to leaving. Um, we'll also send everyone a copy of this presentation so you have that as a fallback option. Um, you know, maybe some of the teammates that you work with weren't able to join us today. So um, as a follow-up to this webinar, we'll send this presentation out, and you can use that to kind of help answer questions or, or you know, talk about this with some of your other team members. Um, you know, hopefully everybody is able to join in and uh, weren't experiencing any issues, but if so, you know, that's always a fallback option as well. So without any further ado, we can get started. So, one question that you're probably asking yourself since you've decided to join today's webinar is where exactly does group sales on the whole fit in with your online or with your eGalaxy web solution? You know, you're probably thinking, how are groups going to be handled in an online manner using some type of e-commerce solution? Well, one answer to that is, of course, the eGalaxy group sales module. And it is really a module. It's an add-on module that um, basically plugs right in with your consumer web store, your eGalaxy web store, but provides you and your guests with a new subset of pages that are specifically designed to handle group sales online. What's nice about that, though, is that it means that you still have those same tools within Galaxy to configure and manage everything you would your normal consumer store but give your groups a nice, easy, if you will, a customer-centric workflow or a group-centric workflow that they can follow online and handle their specific needs. Um, you know, just like the traditional consumer web store, the eGalaxy Group Sales web store also has all of the orders brought into Galaxy and visible within the order entry module, which gives you the need to, or I'm sorry, gives you the ability to view any orders that were placed online uh, through order entry, as well as you know, potentially have to perform some type of management functions. Maybe changes or modifications might need to be, um, or might be in order, so you can do that through group sales. Um, and then, of course, all of the reporting available through our group sales module is, is there as well. So all of these orders that are placed online are brought into the Galaxy database and handled the same way that you would an order placed through order entry or even your traditional consumer web store. There's a key difference that I do want to point out, though, and that is that any of these orders that are placed through the eGalaxy Group Sales web store are associated with the group that the person who's doing the shopping belongs to. So that means that you know if, if a teacher logged in, the order that that teacher places is associated with the school that they work for. So all of the users are associated with their specific group, whereas in our traditional web store, it's associated with just web sales. So now you're able to further see and segment out um, for tracking and reporting purposes which groups are placing orders online, 
um, and, and how much and, and so on and so forth. So it does take that additional step and track it down to the individual group or customer level as well, which is uh, really nice when, when you're looking to do some of the advanced reporting. And we'll get into that in just a little bit. I just wanted to point out how this kind of ties in and, and, and mention that it uses all the same tools that you're already using with your web store. And we'll take a look at that. So who exactly um, benefits from using some type of online group sales portal? Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to spend the next few minutes talking about who those people are, who's really going to benefit from this. And, you know, ideally, or I should say this module is really ideally suited for groups like school groups who might be looking to book a field trip or maybe some kind of an educational program for their students at your facility. Um, it's also great for your various corporate partners who are looking to schedule maybe a company outing or maybe they'd like to offer their employees a way for them to purchase tickets online at a discounted rate. Um, you know, maybe they offer that as some type of a perk or an employee benefit, and there's ways that that can be done so that any employee associated with one of your corporate partners would receive special rates as well. It's also great for, um, you know, the different types of community organizations that you work with. Maybe, maybe you do a lot with Boy Scouts or Girl Scouts. Maybe there are church groups, uh, different youth organizations, or just other groups within the community that you, you live and work within. Um, that might be similar to what we just described, all of these different types of groups and organizations can benefit from using the eGalaxy Group Sales Web Store. Uh, you know, one of those reasons that it's ideal for these types of groups is because, as we mentioned, this module works just a little bit differently than your traditional web store. So each group that you've granted this ability and, and I did want to point that out. This is a, a, a perk that you can offer different groups. You don't have to extend this to everyone, but you can pick and choose which groups have this access, have access to this web store. So any of these groups that you've granted this ability to, the people that work for those groups that we refer to as contacts within Galaxy, they're each given a specific user login. And you can control who from those groups can log into the, to the eGalaxy Group Sales Web Store and, and who can't. Um, so that login information is actually unique for each person or user within that organization. And the really nice thing about that is that when the user is logging in and enters their username and their password, the Group Sales Web Store does a check. And it looks to see who that person is and which group or organization they belong to. And, you know, we mentioned a moment ago that that's great for the reporting capability it offers you. You now know when people are buying online or when they're calling the call center. Um, you know, you can, you can do some advanced reporting and see how many tickets people are purchasing from these groups and how much these groups are spending overall. But another key feature that I like to highlight is that it also allows you to extend any special group rates that you'd be offering these, these people that would be calling into your call center, um, but it extends that to the online realm as well. So now it, you know, all the guesswork is taken out of it. When a user logs in, the web store checks to see which group or organization they work with, and as they're shopping on the group sales web store, they see the rates that are unique to that organization that they work for. Um, there's no need to worry about a guest remembering some special discount code that they have to um, you know, enter into the transaction. Um, you don't have to worry about them calling into the call center because they're getting the wrong rate. It's all factored in and done automatically for you when they log into the web store. Uh, another key benefit for your groups is that the process has been simplified and it takes all the guesswork out of placing the order online because you're presenting them with an enhanced calendar view that displays only the events that meet the criteria that they're specifically looking for. So for instance, if you're a teacher, like we mentioned before, and you're shopping online on the group sales web store, maybe you're a third grade teacher, um, the store can be configured to ask each user a, a unique subset of questions during their transaction flow. And they'll answer those questions um, they're all customizable. You can pick and choose what information it is that you're looking for. And as the guests answer those questions, 
the um, web store will display events that meet the specific criteria that they've provided you during that transaction. And I'm going to show an example of that shortly, but I did want to point out that we're using our Galaxy attributes um, to, to, um, to utilize that feature, which is really nice. And, and we'll get an example of that shortly here. Um, another feature that people like is the ability to extend, if you will, a buy now, pay later um, type of a, a feature using your Galaxy credit accounts for your groups and your organizations. So, you know, traditionally when somebody's purchasing online, they would go through the transaction online and they get to a checkout page where they're required to enter in their credit card information. With the group sales web store, you can extend credit accounts that may be in existence already, or you can create credit accounts for these groups and organizations and allow them to purchase on credit and then you would invoice them at a later date and time. Um, this is a really nice feature. You know, some, some groups you um, have the ability to, I should say it this way. So for some groups, you may want to extend that functionality to some people, but not to everybody. And we give you the control over which groups you extend this to, as well as to which people within those groups. So there's an invoicing feature using the existing Galaxy credit accounts um, that will allow groups to book their uh, orders online and then pay at a later date and time. Really, really nice feature. But it's not just your customers that stand to benefit from using a tool like this as well. Um, you as the organization actually stand to gain a number of uh, operational effic uh, efficiencies and also extend your sales reach. So one way would be by allowing new groups or organizations that are actually interested in partnering with you to enroll online to request access to this web store. I really like that feature. Um, not only does it help you, you know, extend that sales reach and, and potentially identify groups that you may not have known would be interested in doing something like this or maybe that you're not working with at all at this point, but in addition to that, they're also going to populate an online form. So they're going to fill out their name, their contact information, the demographic information for you, saving your call center folks or your group sales folks a, a lot of time. Um, instead of entering data, they're able to handle, you know, the pertinent things that, needs, that they would need to. Maybe they're, you know, selling more, maybe they're um, being reallocated into different departments or different areas, but it, it's a really nice time saver for you and your team because these groups will go ahead and fill that out for you. So now you have all the, the correct information. You're, you're sure that you're not mishearing somebody or mistyping a name or something along those lines. Um, it also means that your groups are going to have the option to book their visit at any time that they find convenient. So going back to that same teacher example from before, you know, I, I mean, my, my mother is a teacher. There's a lot of teachers in my family, and I know they tell me all the time that they're just so busy during the school day. There's, there's not a moment to step away, and I'm kind of glad I have four kids. I don't want teachers stepping away when, you know, they're in charge of my kids. So when you offer a tool like this where these groups can book online, you know, that teacher who's busy all day long but is, you know, seriously looking at booking a field trip at your facility, they're not stuck trying to find somebody to cover their class. They're not stuck, you know, trying to, um, you know, sneak out for a few minutes to finalize some kind of order. They can easily log in at home at the end of the day with their unique username and, and password and then really put in the time and the effort that they need to to find the right experience and, you know, make sure that everybody really enjoys the, the end result there. So extending that to an online platform really will uh, offer the convenience that a lot of people are looking for nowadays. Um, you know, a, another feature that I really like about this is that um, any, any follow-up information that you need to do with these folks. Um, so when somebody places an order online, we're all, you know, familiar with that kind of a process. We get some kind of a confirmation email. You can customize those confirmation emails to the point where you can also automatically attach specific documentation or specific uh, forms. You know, I've seen a lot of groups that use this automatically attach a map. If you're a zoo or a museum, how nice is it for you to include a map of your, your facility, even a, an amusement park, right? Here's the map. Here's where groups meet. Here's where you're supposed to park the buses, so on and so forth. 
So the group sales web store has a feature where you can automatically attach this pertinent and important information to that confirmation email so that you can be sure it gets into the hands of the people that need to receive it. Right? You're taking all the responsibility off of your users and placing it on the system to do things for you automatically. You know, and, and I mentioned this a moment ago, but this eGalaxy group sales store is tied to Galaxy. So all the orders that are placed online go into the Galaxy database. If they're booking events, all of the events are a shared capacity pool, meaning if I'm booking from that event through point of sale or if I'm booking through my traditional web store, if I'm booking through this group sales web store, I'm never going to oversell because we're all sharing that same pool of resources. That's a really nice feature, but it also means that all of the reporting that you've been using for order entry would be uh, something that you could use with uh, orders that were placed through this online portal as well because it's all sharing and it's all entered into the same database. So when I pull reports from my operations staff to tell them when various groups are arriving or when my marketing team wants to know, you know, are these corporate sponsors or are these corporations profitable, you know, maybe we're offering too much of a discount. I can use the existing Galaxy reports in Galaxy or even in Reporting Plus um, to, to give them the data that they're looking for and help make, you know, data-driven decisions like everybody's looking to do nowadays. So it's, it's a big benefit to be able to um, you know, have that all in a shared database as well. And I promised you that it would be a short presentation because I think the real benefit is actually seeing this, uh, this module in, at work. So I'm going to switch gears here and I'm just going to uh, close out of this presentation and minimize that and I'm going to bring up, I'm running a virtual machine. So what you're seeing here is me uh, sharing my, my virtual machine. Um, so right now you can see Galaxy and I'm just going to open up a typical web browser and we're going to walk through a few sample transactions here. So I'm, I've just gone to the link uh, for my group sales web store and the first thing that I want to point out is that it is presenting me with the login information that we talked about before. This page can be customized. Um, we've themed it to meet our, you know, our, the, the same look and feel as our standard consumer web store. Um, but what we've done is we've added some, some information that pertains to your groups and your uh, organizations that you work with. So I have information about you know, entering in their username. I also have a link here if they're a new group and they would like to go ahead and, and request this type of access. If I click on that link and open that up, you can see what that form looks like. So I can put in here any field that I have in, you know, with the red bar over the right-hand side is a required field. You can dictate what information they need to provide to you in order to create a brand new account so that their users can start logging in. And you'll notice we're requesting not only the company information, but we're also going to request contact information as well. So who's the person making this request um, will require their email address that will become part of their username and password to log in. Um, and then this would actually get submitted, and I'll show you the approval process here in just a little bit. But let's look at a sample transaction first. Um, you can see that because I've saved some information in here, I'm just going to clear out the name and the password for now just to, um, you know, start with a clean slate. So the first example I'm going to show you, we talked about different types of groups and organizations that this is ideal for. We talked about school groups. We talked about, you know, different um, community organizations, corporations, so on and so forth. And I'm going to, I'm going to show you the example of a, a group or, you know, a community organization. Um, so the person that I'm logging in as, his name is Bobby Boyer, and his email address is Bobby B, and then that's just my local email server here um, for the, the end of that uh, username there. And I just pre-populated the password, but I believe that's the wrong one, so I'm going to type that in again real quick. And I'll point out this company code in a later example. It's something that can be required but does not need to be because in reality what's happening is as we enter in a username and a password and I hit sign in, this is where the web store starts to do its magic and this is where it's checking to see which group, which organization that person is associated with. So this person, Bobby B., when he logs in, he's presented with group general admission tickets. So if I expand this down just a little bit, we can see that based on his rights and his privileges, 
he can buy group admission tickets and he's presented with senior, child, and adult tickets. Um, one of the things I want to do very quickly is just come over to point of sale because you'll notice that these adult, child, senior tickets, normally an adult ticket is $30. If I add that into the transaction to make it a little bit bigger here, you can see an adult general admission ticket is $30. Let me just cancel out of that real quick because I did talk about how the group sales web store automatically um, adjusts for any special rates or prices that you're offering these groups and organizations. So in point of sale, a walk-up customer pays $30 for that adult ticket. But because we have special rates associated with Bobby's group, he is receiving a 10% discount, $3 off, and you can see that he's getting a $27 price for that very same ticket. So we mentioned that those prices are automatically accounted for, automatically displayed, and that's what he can see. So he's, he's receiving his special rate up front. So I'll go ahead and I'm going to add in five tickets. Right, so I could have done the plus or minus, I can just type in five, but let's go ahead and add five. I hit add to cart, and oh, lo and behold, I'm getting an error message. Well, this is a group sales web store, right? So that, that entails somebody being associated with a group, and you typically would only offer these group rates when people are purchasing a lot of tickets at the same time. And I said the word a lot, you know, um, I specified that because you're going to have different rules than maybe other organizations around you. So the rule that I have in place is that in order to actually be able to make this purchase, I put a transaction minimum of 10 tickets because that to me is the minimum definition of a group. You can decide for yourself what those are. That's all something that you can configure and customize within Galaxy. But what I wanted you to be able to see is that you can enforce your rules and you can set them up in Galaxy so that they are enforced online as well. So he cannot purchase these tickets. If it's anything less than 10, he would just go to the traditional consumer web store. But in this case, he's on the group sales web store, my minimum is 10. So I'll go ahead and I'll add in 10 tickets at this point. And when I hit add to cart, it'll now bring me into the next piece of the transaction, which is in this case, the shopping cart, so he can review and see it's $27 per ticket, 10 tickets, transaction total, um, I am automatically associating an order fee. That's something that you can do, but you do not have to do. Um, that's using the standard Galaxy order fees uh, functionality that exists even with your traditional web store as well. Uh, you know, I failed to point out earlier that this is a responsive design store. So you'll notice as I'm minimizing and changing the resolution of my web store, that the, the, um, the web, I'm sorry, of my web browser, that the web store is automatically responding to that as well. So just like your consumer web store, the eGalaxy group sales web store can be shopped on any type of device. It can be a, a tablet, can be a laptop, desktop computer, it could be a smartphone, um, because it is responsive design, just like we saw with, or just like we see with the consumer web store. Um, so at this point, now that we're, everything is okay, I'm going to hit the checkout button, and we'll start to see some of the different options here. So because Bobby logged in. All of his information is, is in here for me because we've saved all of his information. We've got his email, his phone number, his name, et cetera. At the top, we do need to choose a delivery method. And just like your consumer web store, the delivery method, you get to pick and choose what options are made available to these groups. Maybe you do not want to offer the same delivery methods that you would a traditional consumer web store. But in this case, I've extended the what we call print on web function, which is you know bring the, the barcodes up right here on the screen. Great for a, a phone or something along those lines. I've got my print at home delivery method. They can pick these up at a kiosk, or I've got my hold and will call delivery method where you know they, they purchase now, but when they show up, they go to my will call window and I'll, I'll present their tickets to them that way. So I'll just choose print at home. And that would allow me to email the tickets to the guests so they actually have the tickets in hand before they even arrive at my facility. Uh, and then we get down to the payment information. So here, you know, typically you require a credit card, but Bobby is one of those users that I've extended the credit account to. So you can see pay by credit account. Um, at this point, I, th I think it's important to point out that any field any label that you see on these web pages can all be customized, right? So this says pay by credit account. If you don't like that verbiage, you can change it in Galaxy and change it to whatever you would like it to say. Uh, maybe you want to say use line of credit or pay by invoice or whatever you would like to call it. You can do so within Galaxy. These are all customizable. You can see that if they are doing a line of credit, 
I do require a purchase order number, so we'll just say, um, so this is the Boyertown Lions Club. So Boyertown Lions Club, one, two, three, four, five, six is his PO. Um, if he has special notes or anything that I need to see, he can type the order notes in. I'm going to accept the terms and conditions, and I will go ahead and submit that order. And at this point, we've now completed the order. He's going to be invoiced at a later date and time. So what I'm going to do now is go ahead and copy this number, which is the external ID or the order number, and I can go into Galaxy and go into my order entry module, which just opened up, and if I hit the open feature here and I type in that external ID number, it'll bring up Bobby's order. So we can see Boyertown Lions Club, it was open today, $275, and when I open that order up, we can see it's Bobby's order with the 10 general admission tickets. The order fee was on there. We can see that the uh, balance is still outstanding, $275, so he does need to make payment. Um, but we now have this order in Galaxy so that we can do whatever it is that we need to do. We can invoice, we can make adjustments, we can do returns. Whatever we might need to do for this order, we can do so through order entry. It does come over as secured, so things in the order cannot be changed until the order is unsecured, and um, which this is all privilege driven, right? So this is just so people that don't have the rights to do so can't make changes. You'll notice as I unsecure the order, certain fields light up so I could make a change if I need to, um, but I'm gonna leave it as secure. And I just wanted to point that out as a, a security feature for you. So that was a really simple transaction. Let me just close out of order entry for a second. I'm not gonna save any of those changes. And I am gonna go back. I'm actually gonna um, close this web browser altogether. Um, just because I'm going to log in to somebody else and I want you to see that process as well. So I'm going to go back to my group sales web store. And for this example, I'm actually going to show you what it might look like for your school groups. So I've got my educational group information on here as well. You know, I've got a lot of the same information, but at this point, I'm going to log in as John Nelson because we know Bobby Boyer is associated with the Boyertown Lions Club. And I want to show you uh, what a school or an educational facility might experience. So we've got John's information in here. We're going to sign in as John Nelson. And this is the first major change that we're going to notice. We see that we're asking specific information about when they plan to arrive, and then what time they, they're going to arrive at my facility, how many people they're bringing with them, and then I have a description field here as well for a little bit more information. So what I'll do is I will choose, and this down here it means I just got my print at home tickets from the previous order. We'll look at those in just a bit. So I'll do next, next uh, Tuesday, the 30th. I'm going to pick that as my date, and I'm going to say they're going to arrive at around uh, 10 a.m., and they're bringing about 30 people. And in the group description field, I'm going to say um, third grade field trip. I'll just choose this one right down here. Or you know what? Even better, Mr. Izzo's field trip. All right. So we'll type in our information, and as I hit continue, um, this brings up that feature I mentioned before where we can present groups with an, um, you know, a specified list of events that meet criteria that they, they've entered in for us. So two of the questions I'm asking them is what grade is this group associated with and what language do they speak? So I'm going to say they're third graders and language spoken, the only language I can speak is English. So I'm going to choose English here and I'm going to hit continue. So what will then happen is it brings me to my item selection page or my view items page where I can choose different types of tickets. Um, and I'm going to go ahead first and do regular you know, school admission tickets. And I want to point this line out right here. You can customize all the information that you're displaying to these groups, but that line right here tells you that for every 10 student tickets, there's one chaperone ticket automatically added to the transaction. So, in this case, if I were to put in 30 student tickets, uh, we know that it'll get, they'll get three education tickets, and those are going to, I'm sorry, chaperone tickets, and in this case, it's free. You can require that they pay a charge for those, but in this case, we're doing free chaperone tickets. And I also want to go and look at the Zufari. The Zufari is an event where they go through with, you know, what they call their Zufari Explorer, but um, this is a little bit more uh, specific to the day and the time that they're going to attend, right? So what I can do is go ahead and hit this select date and time option, and this is that enhanced calendar view that I was referring to before. 
So you'll remember on the previous screen, I told the web store that I was going to be entering on October 30th. So it remembered that. That date was persistent, meaning it remembered I selected the 30th on the last page, so it entered it for me automatically on this page, just you know, simplifying the workflow for your guests. So on the 30th, the day that you told me you're going to attend, I have all of these options available, right? And the other, the other thing that we did was we also told the web store which grade this group was associated with and what language they spoke. So what we're seeing is not only are we presenting the group with the events that occur on that day, but we're also allowing them to make an, an educated decision to find the event that best matches what they're looking for. So you'll notice that there's a few on here, like this 9.30 a.m. event that says it's an English Zufari elementary tour and it's good for grade three. So that's a good mix, or I'm sorry, a good match. However, it begins at 9.30 and I'm not supposed to arrive till 10. The 10 o'clock event matches for third graders, but you notice it's Spanish speaking, so that's not gonna work for me. And as I continue to move down the line, 11 a.m., still on sale, the elementary Zufari, good for third graders, and it's the English one. So that sounds like a good match to me. This is great because, you know, if I can't mistakenly choose the Spanish-speaking tour and then take 30 English-speaking third graders through a Spanish-speaking tour. That just doesn't go well, right? So I can make sure that I get them in the correct tour, I'll choose that event, and then all that I need to do is finalize how many of the kids are going to be going on that particular tour. I'm going to do all 30 of them, and I'm going to add that to the shopping cart. So as this process is, we are shown that it's automatically adding those three chaperone tickets because of the ratio that we had set. Um, this one, had, like I said, is $0, but you can make it so that those are something that they have to pay for as well. So I'm going to just finalize that and then it'll get me to my shopping cart page. So we can see that the 30 education admission tickets are in there, my 30 Zupari tickets are in there, and then my chaperone tickets as well. So they owe, at this point, $360. So we'll hit the checkout button, and we'll then go ahead and finalize everything. Delivery options. Notice that I only gave two delivery methods uh, two delivery options on this particular, or for this particular group. I'm allowing print at home tickets, or they can do a hold, aka will call delivery method. So again, this is just you know further clarifying, further showing that you can pick and choose which delivery methods are available. So in this case, I'll do print at home just so we can see it. Uh, because I had logged in with my username and password, it's got all my important information in here. I don't need to re-enter it. Um, I could pay by credit card, I could pay by credit account. I'm just going to choose the credit account here. And then this was Concord Elementary. Oops, so Concord Elementary and then their invoice number. If I had order notes, I could enter in the order notes, uh, terms and conditions. You know, the same things hold true with the terms and conditions here that they do on the consumer web store. I could have a modal window pop up that displays the terms and conditions. Um, I can present them right here in the inline form like, like you're seeing right now. So different options uh, exist there as well. And what I'll do is I'll go ahead and submit that. I get my confirmation just to make sure we really want to go ahead with this. And then boom, I'm done. Same thing that we saw a moment ago. We get our order confirmation page. And in just a few minutes, um, we saw it takes about a minute or two for that order confirmation email to get through. And that's just because of the settings that I have here on my virtual machine. I have it checking every minute for new orders. So it usually will take a minute or so to process everything to get the order confirmation out and the print at home tickets to the group. So I'm actually just gonna go and do exactly what we did before. I'm gonna go into order entry and show you. So if I hit the open button here, there are other ways to search. I don't necessarily have to know their external ID. Um, I can search by contact, so that would be Bobby Boyer. So I can, you know, look for Bobby Boyer and find all the orders associated with him. Um, I can search, you know, by the group's name or description. If I use my advanced options, maybe I search for all orders that were open today. And this is, you know, this allows you to filter by multiple criteria. So I could do orders from Bobby Boyer that were open today or whatever I might need to do to find that. And you can see I've got a few different groups in here for that were orders that were placed today. One from testing earlier today to make sure everything worked for you when we were doing this uh, webinar. And then you can see the one that I just opened here. Um, I'll open that up. 
and you can see it's got everything we just talked about. It's got my chaperone tickets that were automatically added. It shows the, the balance. Uh, at this point, it shows that the tickets are issued, which was different than the last one because that means that it's actually gone through the process and we've gotten the, the print at home ticket uh, delivered. So we'll take a look at that in just a moment as well. If I go to my group tab, you'll notice that the group tab is filled out, right? All the information I entered on the web store, the expected number of guests, the day that they're scheduled to visit, the time they're scheduled to arrive, the description that I entered in there, all of that information is, is uh, visible here in order entry as well, including if I hit my visitors and groups button, we said they were coming on the 30th, so it will automatically select that day and list all of the different groups that are scheduled to arrive by time, shows me their group name, and then the expected quantity as well. Um, I think I did one on the 9th. You can see this was one of the tests that I did before, so we can you know, check the various dates on here to see when people are arriving. I don't remember when I did the last one. Uh, I did the 30th, there it is, so we can see the 30th as well. All right, so all that information is making its way into order entry and populating all the, the important reports and things along those lines as well. Um, real quick here, I mean, that's, that's kind of the uh, transaction flow in a nutshell, but what I want to do is open up the web browser, or I'm sorry, the uh, email client here, and go take a look at some of these different orders. So I'm going to open the one that we just did. Um, in this case, I'm going to blow that up. You can see that I've got my order confirmation email. These order confirmation emails, it's the same type of thing that you would set up for your consumer web store. So it's using the same, um, same fields in Galaxy, same configuration options. Um, you can use keywords to specify the important information you want to include, such as the name of the person, um, you know, the order details. All of that stuff is customizable. You can put graphics on here if you'd like to as well. You can see that I'm listing the day the order was placed. I'm telling them if it's an event, I've got the event details on here as well. It shows the price, the quantity, the order, and in this case, they have an outstanding balance. Um, so we see all that. And then down at the bottom here, I've got my attachment, which if I open up, I'll just hit OK there and open this up, um, you can see that I've got my group tickets here. So I'm using group tickets, true group ticket functionality, meaning I didn't get 63 items in my online, or I'm sorry, in my email, attached to my email. Because I'm using a group ticket, this is a, a, a print at home ticket that's good for up to 30 people. So I'd scan that barcode, it'll let 30 people in. Um, I've got my Zufari, so you can see now I've chose to put a 2D barcode on here. Again, these are all customizable. So you can put 2D barcodes on here, standard 1D barcodes. I've got my group details on here saying which event, which, you know, which resource it's using, what time, so on and so forth. And then here are my chaperones as well. And that's just how I chose to do it. I could have put, you know, the three individual chaperones as their own ticket, you know, each individual ticket. There's different ways to do that. Uh, but I did want to show you how that, you know, you could use the group ticket functionality and have all of them handled by one, which is much easier for, um, your teacher to carry around. Speaking from personal experience, my wife and I, we have four children. I have been a chaperone on many a field trip at this point, and I can tell you that it's no fun standing as, you know, a, a, a group leader in charge of five or so, you know, fourth or fifth graders, uh, waiting for the teacher to get all the kids the tickets and the chaperones the tickets and everything. That can be really um, time consuming and, and daunting. So if you've got functionality like this where you can utilize one barcode that covers the entire group, it makes it much more streamlined, much more efficient. Let me close that down and go back over to, uh, I'm going to minimize my VM here real quick. I want to go back into our presentation. Um, still a little bit of time left here, but I did want to talk about one more exciting, um, one more exciting thing that we've got going on here. Um, where we are offering a fall promotion on the eGalaxy Group Sales web store. So right now, uh, we're offering a 5% discount if you purchase the eGalaxy Group Sales module or on the Group Sales Starter Pack as well. So it's a 5% discount on there. We're running it through the end of November. So if you're hoping to take advantage of, of the offer, we have a little bit over a month to, um, you know, to capitalize on that. And if you're interested, you can contact your business solutions manager and they'll be able to help answer any of the additional questions that you may have. Um, you know, they can also help guide you through the entire process. Um, but I did want to point out that the, uh, the, the promotion that we've got running through the end of November. 
So with that being said, I'd like to open it up for questions. Um, so let's just go ahead and I'm going to just check to see if there are any questions. Bear with me for a moment. I'm going to, it's just taking a minute to bring that screen up here. So actually, why don't we do it this way? Sorry that I had to close that out. We can go right back into it here in a moment. So if you have any questions, please feel free to type them into the chat window or into the Q&A. Um, certainly can answer questions about the module, um, the functionality, um, whatever you might need. I do see at least one question that's come in here. Um, so the question that came in asks, group tickets versus regular tickets. If a group wants to purchase 100 tickets and then redistribute to their employees, how are those 100 tickets delivered to them? Is there a way they can go into a portal to access all 100 of their tickets and distribute each separately as needed? There's really different ways that you can do it. Uh, I'm not gonna wait. I'm not gonna call out the people that are asking the questions. So to the person that asked that question, um, there's different ways that you can handle that example. Um, what you're describing is almost the method where they pre-purchased all of them. Um, what can be done is using the group sales code. Um, each employee, if you will, at that organization can log in and purchase them on their own at those special group rates if you wanted, right? So if you want, you can uh, incorporate the group sales code. They enter their username, their password, and the code, and then it'll bring them to their special page, and then each employee can purchase their own tickets that way. Um, so that's one way that you could go about it. Um, that would probably be the, I would say, probably the easiest way to do that as well. The nice thing about that is that goes back to that point we made earlier where depending on who is actually logging into the group sales web store, they each have their own ability, you know, you, you, I should say, have the ability to control who can access the credit account and who can't. So in a scenario like that, I probably wouldn't extend credit to anybody except maybe, you know, your primary contact, your HR person you deal with or whoever it is. And then each of the individual people that um, work for that organization, they, they only have the ability to pay. They don't have the ability to, to do the line of credit like we talked about. Um, and I can show you that set up here as well. Um, so why don't I just go ahead and share my screen again and just to kind of um, give you an idea as to what that looks like, I'm going to go back into my virtual machine and if I go into order entry and I go into my customers, I'm going to go ahead and choose Concord Elementary, right? So I just did a real quick search for something that looks almost like Concord Elementary. Here they are. Um, on this initial screen, you can see balance due. They owe me $720, and that's because of the orders that they placed today. So this does keep a running tally. It is up to date. So it shows me they owe $720, real quick reference there. But as I open that group up on this, um, on this tab here, if you notice if I go to my contacts, these are the people that work within the organization. So for Concord Elementary School, there's Theodore and there's John. Over here under group sales, John has checked Theodore is not. That means John can access the group sales web store, Theodore cannot. And credit account, notice there's a check for that as well. If they have access to the group sales web store, if they have a check in the credit account box, they have that, that pay with credit account option available. I can give people access to the group sales store, like I'm granting Theodore access right now, but I'm not giving him access to the credit account. So he would have to pay uh, using credit card information for that particular order. People can request access for the company online. They can also request individual user access online. So that can all be automated for you. Um, and then, um, you know, there's, there's email templates that you can set up that'll automatically send them the information they need to log in uh, and start purchasing as well. So I think I saw at least one or two more questions come in. Um, before I hit them, we still have a little bit of time here. Um, your sales channel maintenance window that you see that you've used for your normal traditional eGalaxy group, uh, I'm sorry, eGalaxy consumer web store. I've got my group sales web store here as well. So my, my educational group, so you can see how I'm dictating what options are available to them. So I'm offering the group admission, the Zufari ticket, and then, you know, the special PLUs that are being presented to them as well. So the same way that you would be managing your consumer web store, it's all managed through the same tool, with the same tools, I should say, as your traditional web store as well. 
So let's just go back. I'm going to um, stop sharing so I can read that next those next questions that came in. It looks like we've got another one here. Um, so the next question that came in after that first one, can you set it up where an employee can go to the store and buy four tickets max for his family? Great question. The answer is yes. I can set it up. Um, you saw me set up a minimum per transaction, but I can also set maximums on a transaction. So the answer to your question is yes. I did not put a maximum on there, but it's in the same uh, area. It's in your sales channel maintenance window. The transaction limits are set there and you can dictate you know, minimum and maximums for those purchases. So great question. I can't show it because I don't have it set up. I only have the minimum. But to answer your question, yes, you can set it up to buy four tickets max in that, in that order, in that online order, I should say. Um, do you have any two-step verification? Just going to ask for a little clarification on what you mean. Does, does the code have any two-step verification? Um, not sure if you're referring specifically to the group sales code that they would enter in. The group sales code, if, I, um, if I'm assuming the question correctly here, uh, is and probably why I went in there and forgot to show you one moment ago. So if I go back into my customer window and I, I choose Concord Elementary again, oops, next time I'll actually type in the information and search, um, the group sales code, we can specify down here and then this is used when users are trying to create a new account online. They have to enter the code that's on the group set, on the customer record itself in order to create their own account. So um, it doesn't exactly have two-factor authentication in the sense of, you know, like receive a text and use that to authenticate and log in. Um, it's just they have to match the group sales code that you have here in order to be able to create that account. Let me go back and read the next line of questioning. All right, I've got a few more that came in here. So, um, can we attach payment plans to the orders? We usually like to collect 50% up front and then the rest on the credit account. At this point in time, there's no way to do a deposit on the group sales web store. So, it's either pay by credit card up front or um, choose the line of credit and then use the billing terms within Galaxy for the invoicing piece of that. So there's no way to do that for the group sales web store right now. Um, I've seen people get creative and I've seen them add um, just different ways of doing that. You know, they, they would set up billing terms. Um, you say payment plans and that's where I kind of got thrown off. You're not referring to the Galaxy payment plan functionality, are you? Um, but, you know, if, if I'm answering it from a, a you know, uh, as, as straightforward as possible, right now the functionality for payment that's available is to either pay by credit card and pay it all up front or to do the invoicing and pay later. And that's only dependent upon, or I'm sorry, that is dependent upon having the privilege and having the access to the line of credit. Uh, you know, I've seen people do some interesting things and if that's something that you're really curious about, you can certainly follow up, um, you know, maybe via like a conversation later on. Um, but it, it's not necessarily that Galaxy is doing doing anything or the web store is doing anything to take a deposit. It's just creative workarounds people have come up with. Uh, looks like we have another question that was following up the first question. So for their example, the group is buying tickets for $25 and reselling to their employees for $30. You don't want any part in that reselling part, but we want to collect $25 per pass from the organization. So that example is uh, an exact match for what our reseller web store does. So our group sales, our eGalaxy group sales web store is really a way to extend your call center functionality to the web store. So each user, um, each organization, the people that work there or whomever the key people are get their own unique username and password, they log in and they make those purchases. Um, their special contracted rates using your Galaxy sales programs are honored, um, right? All the things that we just saw. The example that you were explaining here where a group buys the tickets from you for $25 and then they resell it to their employees for $30, that's more similar to what our reseller web store does because the reseller web store gives you those three tiers of pricing. It gives you, or I'm sorry, those multi-tiers of pricing. 
um, where you can sell it to the organization for the, the point, uh, I'm sorry, for the price point of 25 that you specified, and then they can turn around and sell it to their employees for 30. That's more similar in its functionality to what you're describing then is the group sales web store. Um, it's a really good question, really interesting question. You know, we can talk about it a little, little bit more uh, in a follow-up, so I'll follow up with you. Um, after this webinar is over, and we can talk through the advantages of each to see what the best match might be for you. Um, strictly from the pricing standpoint, you just described that's exactly how the reseller web store, the eGalaxy reseller web store works. So got, I've got another question in here. Uh, an employee would type in their employee ID and their zip code. Oh, this is a follow-up to the two-factor authentication. Thank you for following up. Um, so the two-factor would be employee typing in their ID number and a zip code in order to verify that they work for the company. Um, so as you saw, it's not that um, it, there is no two-factor authentication like you've just described there. It's a matter of that code being created associated with the company record and then um, giving that information to the key contact within the organization who would disseminate that accordingly. Best practices dictate that you change that periodically, um, but again, that's more of a manual process. It's not two-factor. Very good question, though. Can group descriptions be configured as multiple choice rather than let the customer enter it? Um, at this point in time, the, well, are you talking about the description fields or some of those uh, other attribute questions? The attributes you saw were drop downs. They can be free form. So I'm going to actually bring Galaxy back up and show you specifically what I'm referring to. So if I share my screen again, um, and I'll just point out what can and can't be, right? So if I go into my, you know what, let's just dump this browser, open up a brand new one. I like to do that because I can be sure I'm going to see what I want to see. So I'll go to the web store here. I'm going to log in as John Nelson again. And this is where we got that information. So if you're talking about this field right here, the group description for that question, this is freeform. There's no way to change this to a dropdown because this is actually pulling from the same field that we would see in order entry. So if I open order entry, Let's just say I'm opening it. No, I don't even have to do that. Um, why don't I just open one of the orders that were placed today? So we hit open, advanced. We'll go to open date today. And then we have our three orders, and I'll go to this one right here. So on the group tab here, you'll notice here in order entry, group description, it's a freeform field here, which is why on the web store it's a freeform field as well. The two data types have to match, so uh, it's just a freeform. The reason you're seeing when I click in here is this is web browser functionality that's remembering what I've typed when I've entered information into that field before. That's strictly because of the Chrome browser that I'm using. So this is free form. Um, let's just say the 31st this time, field trip on Halloween, not a great idea, but we'll, just, we'll do that here and we'll just say it's 10 just to get through the transaction and we'll say Mr. Zos field trip, he's a busy guy, he takes them day after day. These fields, these are your group attributes. Or, I'm sorry, yeah, these are your group attributes uh, or, you know, the way to ask these questions on, on the web store here. These can be configured as drop downs or multiple choice. They can be free form. So you have a little bit more um, leeway with how this information would be gathered. Um, but that's being matched against what you're seeing on those various events and, and such as well. So these attributes can be multiple choice or free form. But if we're going back to that first page that we saw one moment ago, um, yeah, I'm going to have to dump the whole browser. Um, to go see it again. Uh, no, I'm not. But, you, but you, actually, if I go probably back here, nope, I'm still midway through. I would have to dump it and close out or log out and log back in. Uh, but you know which group description field I'm referring to. So um, let's just see if some of those other additional questions, hopefully I answered that for you. Um, okay, great. It looks like somebody else had a question and it was answered with that reseller web store question. Good, 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 good. We can always follow up after that as well. Um, or I'm sorry, after this as well, to get more, you know, more details surrounding that. So let's go into the questions and answers now. All uh, right. So what are the internal steps between your group enrollment and your group purchase? Fantastic question. I think I understand the question. So um, let me just go and share my screen again and then go dump the browser, dump this real quick. So, when a group wants to enroll online, which I believe is what you meant by group enrollment, um, you have access to a special page, and that group would fill in their information. Um, 
I don't know. I don't know why I thought of TikTok company, but that's what we're putting in. And then we've got a phone number. There we go. We'll, we'll just put in this information here. Um, I don't even know what that is, TikTok. I mean, it sounds like a clock to me. So we've got our contact information, and then uh, I think I've got everything I need in ISIS. Yep. So I can submit that, and it tells you that the request will be received. Um, so now what I would do is in Galaxy, in your order entry folder, we've got the Customer Manager tool. So Customer Manager is a tool that was added for this enhancement or for this feature, I should say. And what it allows you to do, I'm just going to hit find and show you all the different options that are in here. Okay, so um, it's a list of customers that have filled out that form and have requested access to your group sales web store, right? So in this case, I just hit find and I'm bringing everything up. Uh, if I want, I can search for just valid, just pending, just rejected customers. And you can see that the TikTok company that I just did one moment ago is in a pending status. So I can double click on them here in the customer manager and I can see the information they provided to me. They gave me their address, I've got the contact information, so on and so forth, right? What I can do now is I can associate them with the appropriate information, or I'm sorry, appropriate um, you know, Galaxy fields, like what category they belong to, what form of payments do I, you know, what group do I want to use, do I want to sign a code? I can do some research because I required their website. So I can see if they're a school or this or that to make sure I put them in the right group. Um, and then uh, through that field here, uh, I'm sorry, through, this, through these tabs here, if I go to contacts, I can grant this person access to the group sales account. Maybe I want to give them the credit account, maybe I don't. And then I can hit the generate logon button, which will go ahead and create this user's login information. So it'll create their web login account, send them the information, and then um, you know, I can save that information. I'm not going to say that just yet because I also wanted to show if I go back in here and I'm, I'm clearing everything out, if I have the TikTok company, I can, I can select all of these at once, I can select none of them, I can do inversing the selections, right? So I can also, from this window, I can choose to accept that customer or reject that customer um, as a, a customer account in my system and then access to the group sales web store. So if I hit approve account, it'll send out notification to them, yeah, you've been approved, they get their login information, or Happy Shopper, that person would get their login information, um, and they now have access that way. So it can be almost completely automated with the exception of the approval process. Um, that's not automated, that requires that you, be, you review them before granting them access. I do, know, I do know some customers that set up a trigger in the database to automatically approve all new requests. Uh, I have mixed emotions about that. Maybe I'm just a control freak. Um, some of you who know me may say that's true, um, but I would I I prefer to be able to review everything first um, prior to granting all these people access to the store. Some people don't care, some people do, and they just did it with a very quick SQL trigger. But that's the manual process I just showed you, and you can do more than one at once, right? You saw that I could select a whole bunch, hit approve, and then they all get notified. So, very good questions. Um, all right. At this point, I do not see any additional questions, and I've kept you just a little bit long, so I apologize for that. But I do really appreciate everybody joining in for today's webinar. Um, if you have any additional questions, please feel free to reach out and let your business solutions manager know, who will be more than happy to help answer those questions for you. Um, Again, before we go, I did want to point out that, um, whoops, I just hit the wrong button there. So I did want to point out that we are running that promotion and I'm um, going to bring up the details just one last time for you. Uh, we've got the 5% discount on the purchase of the uh, eGalaxy group sales module or 5% discount off of the eGalaxy group sales starter pack. That promotion ends November 30th. So if you have any additional questions about the promotion or the functionality of the web store, please be sure to reach out to your business solutions manager. Thank you guys for taking the time, and um, we'll talk to you real soon. Thanks, everybody. Take care.